Um, I'm Phil Pajali, a librarian um, here at the Crestwood Library, and um, I am very excited um, about uh, this program tonight, a conversation with um, Golda Solomon, the first poet laureate um, of Yonkers, New York. And tonight I'm going to be um, interviewing Golda. Um, Golda is then going to read um, some of her poems. Um, we're gonna go back and I'll ask Golda some more questions. Golda will then read some more poems. And then at the very end, um, you'll have an opportunity to ask uh, Golda some questions. Um, if you're in the um, if you're in the Zoom room and you're not familiar with Golda Solomon, um, I'm going to read uh, a short bio um, of Golda. Um, Golda Solomon, as I said, is the first poet laureate of Yonkers, um, also the poet in residence at the Blue Door Arts Center, um, a professor, a spoken word artist, an author of two books of poetry. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but the two books are here. Um, Flatbush Cowgirl and Medicine Woman of Jazz, um, an artist, a founder and co-host of Art Speak, Make Waves. Um, Waves is actually an acronym for Writing, Art, Activism, Values, Empowerment, Sharing. Po Jazz on Hudson, uh, Playdates with Poetry and Jazz. Uh, Golda is also a founding member of the Jazz and Poetry Choir Collective and uh, the Jazz and Poetry Choir Collective's latest offering is the CD, We Were Here. Um, if you can see it, it's right in the middle there. Um, this 2021 Yonkers Artist Initiative Arts Westchester grant recipient walks through life more slowly, more powerfully. So welcome, Golda. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank being you for here. Oh, my God. This is <laughs> such a treat. Okay, well, we'll start with some questions. Um, you've described yourself as an impro improvisational jazz poet. When did you start to incorporate jazz into your poems? I want to say Phil sent me the questions beforehand, and I didn't write the answers. But each question brought back a memory, a backstory. I think poets are known for backstories. I was, jazz had been in my life since I was 25 and a little before that. Poetry came in my mid forties and I was actually studying with Reggie Kabiko, who is wrote in Medicine Woman of Jazz. That's how I got my title and he said, when are you gonna ever combine the two? And it was like a light bulb went, out, went off and on. And that's yeah. how poetry met jazz. So where, where, did he, uh, where did he come up with that name, Medicine Woman of Jazz? Uh, oh my gosh. If you'll hand me Flatbush Cowgirl. <laughs> I think partially because my dad was a pharmacist. This is what he wrote, and it blew my mind. Golda Solomon, trickster soothsayer, spins words into whole notes that crescendo, blah, 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 blah. Flatbush Cowgirl is about dirndl skirts and cha-cha rhythms, summer peaches and tight girdles, dot, 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 dot. She is the medicine woman of jazz, riffing with language fused in memory. <laughs> and the title stuck and it was the closest I could get to being a pharmacist, to being near my dad. So thank you, Phil. Um, your background is in speech and communication um, as a student and as an educator. Um, how do you think that training contributes to your poetry? I've been using the phrase happy accident lately. 
a carpet gets spilled on with red wine and you get a vinyl rug that uplifts your whole apartment. I took a break from college. I dropped out in my sophomore year. My mother didn't know I dropped out. I dressed and left the apartment in Brooklyn every day. And I went to a job. After six months of seeing that everyone there was taking courses at night, I went back, resigned. Okay, Ma, I'll become a teacher. I took a speech class for education majors and Oliver Bloodstein changed my life. I changed my major to speech and it was the sounds, it was everything about it. I came alive, I became an A student after being a C minus student. Um, you said that you became interested in writing poetry um, when one of your students gave you a copy of Homecoming by Sonia Sanchez. Um, what was it about the book that inspired you? Like a lot of people, poetry, certain poetry didn't speak to me. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't have a class where it was explained. So poetry never appealed to me. That little book, Homecoming, I opened the book and started to read a poem. It was the first time poetry spoke to me, spoke to my life. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, there was an interview in the book review section of the New York Times with Amanda Gorman. Mm -hmm. She was given another book by Sonia Sanchez by her mentor. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time she got turned on by poetry. Mm -hmm. Sonia Sanchez is a gift for all of us. So. Yeah. Um, you've coined, coined the term po-jazz to describe your work. Could you talk a little bit about what that is? It's not a sandwich from New Orleans. As a lot of people said, oh, we're going to eat. We, I said, no, I wanted a word. And there were other words that were already used. And po jazz, poetry, jazz, mm -hmm. in partnership, po poetry in partnership with jazz. Now I call it play dates with poetry and jazz. But that's uh, how it started at the Hudson Valley Writers Center in 1999. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, you grew up in Brooklyn, but you were drawn to Greenwich Village as a, at a young age. Um, could you talk a little bit about your experiences in Greenwich Village and how it relates to your poems? I think that was the hardest question you asked me. All the, you know, you grow up and those of you who know me, Beth, Arlene, Marsha, Monique, Anne. I was under the illusion that my father was taking care of me by bringing me to Greenwich Village at the age of five for music lessons at Greenwich House, for the dentist, mm -hmm. a playmate across the street, the Greek florist. Mm -hmm. He was really taking care of my mother who never recovered from her mother's death. And my mother I gave me her fat knees, the depression gene mm -hmm. that she fed Shraff chocolates to. My mother was very overweight. Uh, and marriages in those days, the son was revered. Mm -hmm. 
the daughter was supposed to become a teacher. Not, not in all families. There were independent families, not in mine. And it's another happy accident. The reasons he took me to Greenwich Village were to give my mother time. But for me, it gave me freedom. In those days, you could go on the subway by yourself when you were eight years old, mm -hmm. seven years old. I mean, mm -hmm. I studied music. I loved piano. I loved the fuss that was made of me in the, in the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. My father didn't own it. He worked for two brothers. So we had the worst shifts, weekends, late uh, at night. Yeah. But in the pharmacy, he was doc. And you didn't go to the doctors then. You went to the pharmacist. I, I got this rash, doc. What do I do for it? Mm. My brother became a pharmacist. Mm. My brother, nine years older than me. And uh, also speech. Speaking is not the first function of the mouth, it's digestion. When I read in my textbook that speech is an overlaid function, again, a secondary thing that has given me primary pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I said they were great questions. I... <laughs> Yeah, that was, a t I was not expecting that answer. I all. said That's to really you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, did you want to read some of your poems now? And... Yeah. I hope I'm not repeating any. I might be, but there's new and old from all the collections. The first little one is one of three that are going to be on the markers on the trailways and aqueduct in Yonkers. Blow, Dizzy, blow. Spit out hosannas, healing riffs, blast till heaven busts wide open. My mother figure is jazz. Anna Zach gave me life, independence firecrackers announced my arrival, round midnight feedings from infant to woman, the blues hummed loud till teats of notes, chord changes, jazz woke by a legend with three horns of plenty in his mouth blind and yet all seeing. He knew my laugh. Club smells of stale tobacco, sweet sweat and Mary Jane. Riffs that jelly rolled up and down keys. My hungry mouth found you, monk. Your last flourish of arpeggio on the keyboard tipped Hat, cash register opened, paid by the Termini brothers. 3 a.m. walk, streets empty, don't step on the cracks. Ratner's open, welcomes this Miss Anne and supermen of all instruments. I learn the vocabulary of black rage, survival, resistance, this genre of genius. Hail Mary taxis take them home to Brooklyn, Harlem. Farts from trucks beginning early morning runs, dawn breaking, sleep like a baby, ready, set, go again at night, 
weaned on scotch and milk, chicken and waffles, soul sacks at Wells, St. Nick's Pub, showmans on 125th, classic sounds reside, bent anew by my extended family, Bach Takata's wafting through Sir Roland's fingers. Betty Carter sings me the ways of holding on tight. Don't let go the ways of men and love. Blue coronet, the needle's eye, the half note. Finger snapping, thighs slapping, ear popping, five spot. Nina's Mississippi, goddamn. My history lesson down the stairs of the vanguard, 7th Avenue south of my dissonant childhood. Those nights I dream Al Jolson, Gershwin, and smell my daddy's nicotine scent. This is one for Coltrane. I mean, you say jazz, jazz poetry, Miles Davis, Coltrane. I'm going to read one uh, that was written about Coltrane and one for Lee Morgan. I'm going to do them back to back. If you haven't seen it on Netflix, you must see I called him Morgan. A love supreme. A tape discovered in a Seattle basement. Trains sound, trains voice, instruments of a love supreme, a love supreme. You are now remastered on vinyl, preserved, saved all these years. My marriage was a vinyl marriage. That special issue of Downbeat with you on the cover, John, did not make it to my marriage home left in the trash room with all my saved downbeats. My jazz life, like a needle stuck on a 78, repeating, repeating, a love supreme, a love supreme. The marriage gone in the drop of a record on a turntable. Jazz is back. Jazz is back, a love supreme, a love supreme, his prayer for us all. Those special Sundays at the Vanguard when you played with Miles. I ordered the Seattle discovery and memory scratched. A love supreme, a love supreme will play on my 78 player, float out, serenade the Hudson. I will muster up visions of watching you play. See, smell, feel the sweat of your creation. A love supreme, a love supreme. I am solo, young again when I reminisce. Hanging out, hanging out, a love supreme, a love supreme. Pauline Morgan. He left so many unplayed notes, silenced his embouchure slack, vows spit sweet sweat, blood, his fingers not all visible, an E flat hangs on dust particles, his eyes closed, he plays for himself, hot riffs, almost three in the morning closing time, the crowd is one with him, his sound distinct, recognizable, his new old lady, waits at home. Her pliable body awaits his callous touch. His tongue will scent their skins. 
his death at Slugs, Alphabet City. B flat tastes better with a beer chaser. The New York Times garish photos rant about his lost talent, shot dead by his wife. She, 10 years his senior, a blizzard that night, snow white, blood red. She who bathed his drug out of body, juiced him clean, tossed out with the pith and skins of squeezed fruit. Her love once fragrant turned, replaced with rancid rage, kills his future and hers. A ram's horn points to heaven, bleats high. Good place to stop. Yeah, that's, they're extraordinary those poems. Thank you for sharing them. Thank you for listening. Yeah. He's an incredible, I keep turning to him because <laughs> he's such a good listener. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll go back to the questions here. Um, your second collection, Medicine Woman of Jazz, was published in 2012. Uh, when did you decide that you were going to collect your poems for, um, for books? Poetry is competitive. And people ask you, it was the days before you could self-publish. Are you published? Who's your publisher? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't about, I didn't have the, the mechanism for rejection, for sending out letter out of letter, go to a publisher's mm -hmm. conference. Mm -hmm. And, but it was time to do something. And one of my friends says, I know a publisher who loves jazz. And that's how it happened. <laughs> um, well, as we learned from the introduction, um, you were close to your father, who was a pharmacist. Um, he appears in a few of your poems, including um, Last Rites and Bob from My Daddy. Uh, can you talk about how he influenced you? It's every girl wants daddy's love. And he died when I was so young, I was 12. And I think the thing that bothers me, as a sound person, I can hear people's voices in my third year. Mm. I can't replicate my father's voice. He influenced me. He was taking care of me the best he could while he took care of her. Hmm. Um, I would hear them fight. I would hear him call her Yiddish name, Hana, Hana. But um, he took me all the way up to the balcony at the Roxy Theater. Perry Como was performing. It was the best time I'd ever spent with my dad. Yeah. That's... <laughs> it's interesting that you said you... you um can't remember his voice or you have trouble remembering it. Um, do you think that in writing these poems that was a way uh, you were trying to trying to remember his voice or trying to capture some memories of him or maybe I think it was a way of having a relationship with him yeah. but the more I wrote and the more mature I got and I mean, it's the same themes. Mm -hmm. It's the same, you revisit them differently with a different perspective, mm -hmm. with a new poetry form. Mm -hmm. um, 
I left out one of the toughest poems. Um, I was sexually abused by a neighbor, oral sex. Thank God it wasn't more, but it was damaging. And all the women in the building knew and no one protected me. So that looking for my father all those years and that it changes you forever. I mean, I, I'm healthy, I'm happy. I worked a lot of things out with good therapists, another happy accident, no, not a clinker therapist through the years, but it's permanent damage. You live with it and you move on from it. Otherwise, otherwise you're not a happy person. I'll always see the glass half full. I didn't mean to. Oh man, his okay. facial expressions well, are. Um, yeah, so I, I wanna ask you, um, I'm curious about the arrangement of the poems in the book and how the work is divided into sections. Yeah. How did that come about? I couldn't answer that one. I kept thinking, how did it came about, come about? Uh, Ted Berkowitz at the time did sketches hmm. of a lot of the uh, jazz musicians, the women that are in there that mm -hmm. delineate uh, the sections. And then I thought, well, there are memory poems, there are jazz poems, there are blues, there, and it started to fall. It, it's like a, um, a collage like the collages I do now, mm -hmm. it, they, they fall into place. And the new volume, uh, they, have, they borrowed a copy of Medicine Woman of Jazz. I'm down to my last copy. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing volume two after hours. And I have all the sections for that already picked out already arranged yeah so this is this is the book uh medicine woman of jazz and you had mentioned the illustrations which are wonderful oh my um, god yeah there's one of them it's you funny you turn to etta jones uh, yeah um was it your idea to include illustrations in yes book? and ted's yeah. and uh jazz and poetry who's that yeah. one let me oh eri yamamoto uh, incredible keyboardist. Yeah, so it's um, yeah, it's not available. It's available for hundreds of dollars on Amazon. Well, there are three copies of the book in the Westchester Library System that you can you can check out. Wow. But, uh, um, I've read that you had stage fright when you tried to be an actor. Um, Actually, it was playing the piano. Oh, okay. All right. But also yeah. as an actor, I'm a ham, yeah. but enter laughing, exit laughing. I'm, I'm the freest person, but not with acting. And poetry. Yeah, I was going to ask, what is it about poetry that makes you more comfortable in front of an audience? I can have my text here. When I perform with a musician, I could vary the words, repeat them, change them, uh -huh. listen to something a bass player is doing. And so it's like the spontaneity of it kind of distracts you from yeah. the audience being there. And now right. I was nervous at the mayor's gig. I was mm -hmm. surprised. Uh, I, I heard my reading was very successful. But I was more nervous than I'd been in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but no more stage fright. I work with kids, cultures where my students are profiled, thrown to the ground. I mean, and, and here are these big guys afraid to speak in public. 
speaking is still the number one fear, you know. Yeah, it's, um, I guess a lot of people fear that more than they do death. That's what I've read. Yeah. I think, who said it, Beth? Woody Allen or? Yeah, there is a quote. Um, yeah, I think it's somebody said it. We'll figure it out. You'll, you in the, in the Q&A, Q &A, Q &A, Q &A, I know you yeah. know it. Beth remember, knows everything. I remember when I was in college, uh, my public speaking instructor, she was very strict. And I remember one thing that she hated is when we get up in front of the class and we begin a speech by going, okay, so she would make us stop immediately and start again. Because <laughs> it's this nervous thing that she wanted to make sure we didn't we didn't do. So but anyway. There you go. That was one of the best courses I took in college. So, wow. Yeah. Um, as the first poet laureate of Yonkers, uh, Ta -da. <laughs> you'll be developing community-based programs focused on poetry. Could you talk about a couple of the programs that you plan? Yes. Save the date. Saturday, September 10th, 1 to 5 p.m. on the promenade with the science barge at Dock Street. To Wells. Uh, my grant writer, my volunteer grant writer is in the audience here, Marsha Klein. It's going to be a go fly a poem day. Bring a kite, build a kite. We'll have kites. All the arts groups will be represented. Bring a poem, write a poem, read a poem fly a kite, and two poetry readings. My guest reader is Sheila Maldonado, a colleague of mine at BMCC, really a phenomenal poet. And all the poet artists will be manning the tables, helping families, kids, build kites, write poems. It's gonna be a glorious day. Popcorn, Juice, cookies, a DJ, a nice DJ. He blends the mixes. And hopefully all the arts groups will be represented. So it's going to, and it's on grandparents uh, day that weekend. So that's, that's the, uh, yeah, it sounds great. that's the project. Um, I'd like you to read more of your poems, if you don't mind. That would be great. Yeah, I think I would like that. This is an old one. When I started that I Collect Neighborhoods, it was back in the 60s, mid-60s. And this is about one of those neighborhoods that's now gentrified. But in the mid 60s, boy, it wasn't. I was living then on uh, Central Park West. I collect neighborhoods. 1960s Wadley Junior High School, Onyx Charm. The number 10 bus crawls north, Central Park West, Green Plantings, 110th Street, Demarcation Line, Gray Streets, Rancid Odors, Four Lawn Screech of Breaks. I get out here. Boarded up storefronts, broke glass, broke lives, broke ground for change your life housing, concrete tries revitalize. Stay alive neighborhood, cement trodden, stray dogs sometimes ate better than students. Walk onto 114th Street. This towering edifice of learning Pillars of brick and limestone. Am I in Paris? Ghosts of gentle women 
etched in stone, now onyx, Rapunzel's, their blossoms flirt to open, tempt ebony princes, rush the tower. Ebony princes refuse to crumble. Teachers work, scarred textbook rejects, crumbs and dreams never lose the dream. Teach and rescue, read and rescue, adds and subtracts rescue, creaky elevator to fifth floor, slow, slow, stop, cubby of a room, converted book closet or janitorial supply area, whiff of disinfectant, rodent spray, speech improvement served here now. I had the good fortune of going to uh, Cuba and I'm glad I told you about my childhood because it's written in longer versions, but here's a form that really hammers it. This is going to be in the new book, Cuba, number one, Splazam. We are in Havana. We are next to an estuary. This one, the Gulf of Mexico, not my Gulf of Hudson that flows visibly from my Yonkers window. David and other new travel companions at this Latin jazz festival are sipping rum and dropping names. Groups they favor in New York and where they go for jazz listening. He mentions Sphere and I am back in monk time. Charlie, Ben, Butch Warren, I could regale my fellow jazz listeners with stories. I sit still as memory stirs. They heard the music on CDs and now hear young lions. I was there when it was happening. I hold Charlie Rouse's words said to me decades ago, near and still dear his throaty whisper, a mantra for my validation, amulet of acceptance. He just a decade or less in years ahead of me, I waited patiently to say hello to Charlie. I had been away from this scene and would gladly remind him of this Ofe jazz hag, Golda. I was startled to hear him say, you have come into your elegance. Charlie Rouse would move somewhere out west for health reasons. His sound, his words, memories fired up by a Cuban evening. I am estuary flow in different directions. I will exit by choice at 88 keys plus one more sharp or flat. Salt taste, my licked lips seasoning. Habana noches en enero, la ciudad de Santiago de Cuba. Tiene mi corazón, jazz, always jazz, jazz always jazz. Um, I'm going to do just, what, what time is it, by the way? Uh, it's 7.45. <laughs> okay. I'm going Let's to do, do just a couple more. You'll have to come back in the summer outdoors for Balbina Bernina and my Sestina after Lilith. I want to thank J.P. Howard of Women Writers in Bloom. She comes up with forms every 3030 group in April. And she came up this 
EIN2, E-I-N-T-O-U form that forces language to be used meaningfully as well as sparingly. Secret number one, skipping milk on mouth, girl. Noun, verb, object, lessons. Suck this lollipop, my sugar. Blue lined notebook pages sullied. Notebook slammed shut. Life smudges permanent. Two. Notebook slammed shut. Daddy's heart slammed shut. Piano slammed shut. Mommy's love slammed shut. Family slammed shut. In the apartment where the bathroom door was always open. And the last one, a love poem. A different kind of love poem. My right ankle initiates, pliant arch turns, spoons, my stiff injured left ankle. My right hand comforts, cups my left cheek. A yoga breathe in through my nose, out gently through my mouth, willing sleep to come. And for a brief moment, I am back in my marriage, a marriage that has ended. No more double, now queen bed. I am free to be poet. I want to thank my friends who came and of these other people who I can't, they're, they're like little <laughs> figurines. I want to thank this wonderful library. I came in here and almost cried. It reminded me of the library on Linden Boulevard near Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. You got to come to this library. It's it's nice. It has its uh, it charm. charm. It's, yeah. it's yeah. charm. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to open the floor now to questions from our uh, Zoom attendees. If you have a question for um, Golda, you can uh, you should be able to unmute yourself now and, and talk, or you can write your question in the chat if you're more comfortable with that. So, Golda, I was at your inaugural. I had no idea that you were nervous. You pulled it off wonderfully. You, you read uh, your, your introductory uh, remarks. Of, uh, you were introduced, I would say, with wonderful in introductory remarks by others. And I enjoyed it very much. So I will ask you a question. Um, what does it mean? Maybe this is a little banal, but what does it mean to you to be the first poet laureate of Yonkers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two answers. <clears throat> I would be lying if I didn't say I was humbled by it. I apologize for so many years for becoming a poet from communications, not from an English background, until Cheryl Boyce Taylor pulled my coattail. She's also from a communications background. It's also, I'm not, I wish I were a better political person. So much of it is politics. That's why I wanna bring in all the arts groups to my events, what I'm doing. Yonkers is the third largest city in New York state beating out Rochester. Uh, where my brother went to live and hide. Um, I love it. It's overwhelming. Uh, I have no time for my depression. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, I mean, between teaching and writing and the 3030 and the projects, 
and the mayor's office. Uh, my contact there is Juanita Crosby. Her eight-year-old read the Pledge of Allegiance. Bet. I mean, I, I'm enjoy. I'm going to milk it. <laughs> That's good. Golda, you were born to be poet laureate of Yonkers. <laughs> uh, any other questions? In the chat, uh, we have, where can we get Cheryl Boyce Taylor's books and your books? Say that again, please. Where, where can we get um, Cheryl Boyce Taylor's books and your books? Oh my God, my books. It, there's no more till my new collection comes out of me. But uh, the CD from the Jazz and Poetry Choir Collective, you can hear on my website, Spotify, all those. Uh, we did take care of business. Um, and it's up there. Um, Cheryl Boyce Taylor's book is available. Forward me an email and uh, send me an email. I'll forward it to Cheryl. Um, Cheryl is going to be the guest speaker at Art Speak. Oh gosh, I don't know if it's, I think it's May. And she will have copies of her books. Maybe we'll have some at Blue Door Art Center. She's talking to her publisher about it. But I thought Art Speak needed a, a special person for all the work that they write about. And, and no better reward than hearing Cheryl. Watch out. Hello, can I say something? Hello? Hi, Lois, yes. Sure. Yes? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Lois. Uh, I grew up in Yonkers. I've lived in Yonkers for 70 something years, just moved to Rochester. And it <laughs> is so wonderful to, to, to hear this connection back to Yonkers. I grew up in the Bronx and, and just, I just, it was my surprise. I want to thank the friends at Crestwood Library, the library for doing these programs, these Zoom programs. I just came by, you know, accident seeing Z um, Z's letter uh, note today, but I really, and I love jazz, love jazz. So your combination, it just, it warmed my heart. It brought back my childhood and thank you so much. Oh, I thank you. really loved thank being you. introduced thank to you. Phil and Z. Yeah, and Phil, you are a master interviewer. Isn't he? He's great. He's great. I mean, I knew all these people. I just moved away from them, but I'm so glad to be be back. These questions really got me going. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to write out my answers. I'm just going to do a buzzword. <laughs> so I, I'm spontaneous when I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I will look forward to uh, getting your books. And well, reading. make yourself familiar at Blue Door Art Center, you know? Make myself a what? Blue Door Art Center. I don't live in Yonkers anymore. Oh, you're in? No, I'm in Rochester. Oh, oh I got yeah. it reversed. You're in, I'm Rochester. in Rochester. I lived in Yonkers for 70 somewhat years, and now I'm, in, <laughs> I'm away. So I appreciate being back. Every time I went to Rochester, it snowed. Oh yeah. It's Even on days when they said there was no snow. Yeah, it, sn it snowed yesterday. We took a walk in the, in the woods, it was snowing. Yeah. Actually, my niece lives in Rochester and I have finally a family connection with her. Good. And Marsha's uh, daughter, Live Marsha Klein's daughter is in Rochester. So amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I thought it was yeah. a reverse. No. Yeah, no. No. I oh. Grew, I grew up in Syracuse, so I know about the snow <laughs> thing. So oh, wow. <laughs> um 
Okay, so what other questions do we have for Golda? Hi, or Golda. Or comments. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Hi, Golda, it's Hugo. Oh my God! <laughs> Give me Floppish Cowgirl <laughs> Phil. Oh my God, I told him about you. Oh, I Cameron. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Then uh, you couldn't self-publish. So Hugo did it under, wait, I have the name here. And what did you call it? Cover and block design by Hugo Cruz Morrow, published by CM Graphic Design. Oh yeah. my God. I know them since they're, <laughs> How old? Since you were 15? Yeah, 14, 15. Um, oh, the, oh yeah. my God, you're so beautiful. Well, you've inspired me, you know, since then. <laughs> and uh, made me fall in love with so many things. I just wanted, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say that you took me to see Busby Berkeley uh, movie on Broadway and across Lincoln Center when I was still hardly spoke English. And you made me fall in love with New York. And you told me that I was gonna have a wonderful life and I have, and you're still inspiring me. You know, uh, watching you get this honor and, and hearing you and seeing you now, it, it's just, it fills me up. So congratulations. And, uh, and Dali Levi was um, from Yonkers. Oh, right. <laughs> All so. right. Oh my gosh. Cameron, I still have that little picture of you. I all I still have your sculpture, Hugo, that you did when you were 14 of the ballerina. Yeah. The wire sculpture. Yeah. And all your paintings. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well. Still, thank you. Oh my. Oh, I shaved today. <laughs> um, for attending and also for your wonderful questions and comments for Golda. So um, I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and uh, maybe I'll see you around in the library. Thank you, so, Phil. Thank you, Golda. Oh, wow. <laughs>